Eric Metaxas is the author of best-selling biographies on Martin Luther, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, and more. In his latest work, he profiles another Christian search for the meaning of life and how he found it in an unlikely place. Eric Metaxas is a New York Times best-selling author, speaker, and nationally syndicated radio host. He's a friend to presidents <laughs> and celebrities and a passionate crusader for the common man. In his latest book, Fish Out of Water, A Search for the Meaning of Life, the famed biographer tells his own story. His search with all its highs and lows led to one climactic moment when he found the answer he sought. Well, Eric joins us now by Skype, and welcome back to the program. Thanks for having me, Gordon. Great to be back. Well, you've, you've got a very ambitious title, uh, Fish Out of Water, The Search for the Meaning of Life. I know in today's world, a lot of people would go, well, there's no meaning to life. Well, why did, why did you pick that title? Well, uh, it's a little complicated, but it only says a search for the meaning of life. It doesn't say I found the meaning of life. And, and to be perfectly honest, it's not true. I think that a lot of times we're stumbling around half searching. We're not really searching in earnest. And I tell my story, um, in many ways, it's a secular book. I want believers to give it to non-believers to, to share this story because it's the story of a non-believer or of somebody who kind of has intermittent belief but is not all in, has not really accepted Jesus. And I stumble around the way many people do. I'm not really overtly hostile to God, but I'm just, I don't know, you know, what's what. And so I say the search for the meaning of life because, you know, at some point you think, well, what is the meaning of life? What's the meaning of my life? Do we know? Can we know? Well, let's talk about the skeptical years, because as a skeptic, you seem to be attending a lot of Christian uh, meetings. You also seem to be reading a lot of Christian books. Why were you doing that? I grew up in the Greek Orthodox Church, so every Sunday we went to church. But a lot of people go to church. It's a cultural experience. It could be a wonderful cultural experience. And as you read the book, my experiences in the Greek Orthodox community, it's, it's just a loving, wonderful community. But they never managed to clarify the gospel, to clarify you need to know Jesus personally. It was all kind of assumed you're baptized and you just kind of go on, be a good boy, study hard, you'll, you'll get into a good college, get a good job. So by the time I got to Yale, all of that stuff was really kind of put in the background. And I was confronted for the first time with a secular worldview, with a worldview that doesn't come out and say life has no meaning, but that clearly implies that life has no meaning. Now let's fast forward to the end of the book, and you're one of the few people I've ever met who dreams in Greek. So what was your dream, <laughs> and, and what got you to the point where you're actually praying, you know, and it's a, I, it's a prayer I actually encourage on this show. God, if you're real, could you show me? So you pray that. Yeah. What happened? Yeah. I was in such despair uh, about four years out of Yale, and I was, every now and again, I would shoot up one of those prayers, you know, to the universe, whoever's listening, I, I need a sign. God, if you're real, show me. One night, right around my 25th birthday, and that's the culmination of the book, the Lord reveals himself to me in a dream so dramatically and miraculously, it totally blew my mind. I knew it was the Lord. There was no doubt because he spoke to me in a way that made sense of everything that had preceded that moment in my life, he wove together the different strands, which when you read the book, you'll get the different strands, the fishing and the Greek, and then the life of the mind, the Jungian Freudian idea of the meaning of life. All, the Lord weaves this together and gives me his son, Jesus. But he says, I'm gonna show it to you on your own terms. I'm gonna use your symbolism and I'm gonna one up you and blow your mind and prove to you that I am the Lord, that I know you better than you know yourself. And so the Lord appears to me in the dream. It's like a fairy tale dream and it's a golden fish um, where we get the term fish out of water. It's theologically perfect, which is fascinating to me too, that the Lord comes from where he comes from to our realm to die, a fish out of water dies so that we 
can follow him back into uh, his realm, into heaven. I mean, it's an amazing thing, but the Lord reveals it to me through the Greek word for fish, which I knew immediately in the dream. This is the golden fish, the Greek symbol uh, or the ancient, the early Christians used the symbol for the fish, as we know, because it was the Greek letters, Jesus Christos Theos Simon Sotir, the word for fish, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, our Savior. I mean, all this sounds complicated, but in the dream, it just perfectly made sense, blew my mind. I woke up and I thought, game over. The Lord has revealed to me himself, and I hope that people who are not believers, when they read this book, they won't see it coming, because I didn't see it coming and they'll be able to receive it um, the way I did. All right. Well, you can discover more about Eric's story in his brand new memoir. It's called Fish Out of Water. It's available wherever books are sold. And Eric, thank you for your life and thank you for being with us. Thank you, Gordon. God bless you. All right. We'll be back with more of the show right after this. <laughs> 